The symbol today is eta, which is a symbol for a random force. So this is a Greek eta, which is a strange symbol with a vector over the top. A random force is one that acts this way or that way, and as the time changes, it goes in one direction, then another, then another, and it seems to go in all directions of the compass, one after the other, very quickly. The random force appears, or first appeared, uh, to a, a Roman person who saw dust particles jittering about in the air when the sunlight came into this dusty room and he could see the particles jittering about. But it was first noticed scientifically by Robert Brown, who was a botanist, who saw that if you got pollen molecules and you took the pollen out and sprinkled it on the surface of water and studied it under a microscope, you would see the pollen molecules jittering about on the surface of the liquid on the water, and he thought that this showed that pollen was alive in some sense, moving all the time, jittering everywhere. So he then tested this idea by putting grains of sand on the surface, or dust, or any other particles he could find, and he found that inert particles, such as a bit of sand ground up, would also jitter around. And this phenomenon is known as Brownian motion, after Robert Brown, who discovered it. And it lay hidden away in the literature until it was resurrected in 1905 by Albert Einstein in his year of miracles where he did the most amazing work of his career. He gave an explanation of Brownian motion in terms of a random force, which is moving this particle backwards and forwards in a jittery motion. In fact, the jittery motion shows, according to Newton's laws, the force is the mass times the acceleration. It was accelerating every which way, and as a result, there must experimentally be a random force. So I'm going to show you a demonstration of this, but I'm not going to use water with grains of pollen on it. I'm going to do it using grains of bronze, which makes up the liquid, so you can actually see the motion of the grains around bashing things. And I'll put a, a grain of pollen on the top, which will actually be a polystyrene little thing. So uh, what I have here, is, uh, these are the grains of bronze, and this is the polystyrene blob. And if I put this into mo oscillation, it jiggles about. And if I put the grain on the top, it goes in a random motion, a jittery motion, and moves to the side. If I do it again, put it in the middle. I can't get it exactly in the middle, so it's not exactly the same. And now maybe it'll go another way. And it does. And each time you do it, you might get a completely different path. Down at the very small level, are you focusing in on this, Brady? At a very small level, there are little grains coming in. If I pick one up, I can't, and it baths into the side, then this will jitter that way. Another one will come and jitter it and ping it that way. So it's as though you're playing, you're on a billiard table, and all these balls are whizzing around in all sorts of directions. You put a balloon in the middle, and these balls are bashing around in all sorts of directions. And sometimes it's kicked one way, sometimes it's kicked another way. So this is the idea that there are little molecules in here, in the water, that are acting in this way. And some of them are hitting one side of the balloon, and other time are hitting the other side. And that's causing this jittery motion, which is why Robert Brown thought that this, this thing was alive. So you do this lots and lots of times, and you'll suddenly get the view that you can work out what's going on using Newton's laws of motion. And that's what Einstein did. He worked out from this that you could measure the diffusion of this pollen grain on the surface and measure the diffusion constant. But there's something else. If this is moving through this liquid against all these pollen grains which are moving, there's a frictional force as well. And if you measured that frictional force of a grain moving in a fluid, which is known from Stokes's formula, you could work out this frictional force as well. And from the two, you could measure the kinetic energy of the particle. So what you're getting, in effect, is the kinetic energy, which is the amount of agitation it has. And you can relate that to the temperature of this liquid, the absolute temperature. And that's what Einstein discovered, that you could combine Newtonian mechanics with this random force to thermodynamics with gases and liquids having a temperature, an absolute temperature. And this connection, he predicted, and Perrin went away, or I think it's Perrin, went away and did the experiments and measured all of this and proved it was correct. For which? Perrin got the Nobel Prize. Einstein didn't. The randomness comes because these particles come and hit it on each side, seemingly at random. Of course, 
Newton's law says you can work all this out, but you can never work it out precisely. So you can't really predict how this is going to hit and wh which side it's going to hit and how big a force it's going to be. So that's why we treat it as random. Of course, you might believe it's deterministic, and my friends might do that. But if, if you do that, then I will invoke quantum mechanics and say we can't actually specify everything that precisely. So this is the random force and its effect on physics. Have I finished? <laughs>